say in England. <laughs> Alright, that sounds cool. <laughs> Chew the fat? Well, <laughs> have you never heard that expression before? I've never heard that expression. You never before. heard chew the fat. I just I just heard like last year chew the I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, so, right. I mean, I heard that on a comedy special which it was funny because he was like, that means somebody actually had sex with us all. <laughs> yeah. Like somehow that like caught on and like, hey you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of one of my favorite questions ever is like uh, the guy who discovered that you get milk from a cow how did he discover that how did he discover that you could drink it and how did he know that if you uh, made, it, made it old you had cheese like <laughs> yeah, seriously like what happened <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, oh what's his name oh what's his name Dimitri Martin he was like uh, I think I think it was Dimitri Martin he was just talking about cheese and milk, and he was like, no, no, I know this smells horrible now, but let's just wait a few weeks and <laughs> see how this turns around. Like, everything about milk is just a series of bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, hey, Jay. Uh, How's it going? It, it is just Jay, right? Because <laughs> I'm used to just, like, refer to you as Jay Odin. So, so Jay Odin is my pen name. Jay was my nickname in high school, and Odin is actually my granny's maiden name. So I actually just put them together, and I was like, all right, you know, this will work. Uh, and it stood out, I thought, and, you know, a lot of people seem to remember it in my name. So I was like, all right, let's, let's go with this. So, oh, okay. But my, so name, my name is Jonathan. So. Jonathan. But I go by Jay, that's fine, too. Yeah. I, I I do like J. It's not, it's easy. Like Yeah, exactly. It's a letter. I mean, look, <laughs> yeah, I mean exactly. the, way, the way I spell it. Is you know a little bit weirder because usually everybody's like J A Y. Yeah. I thought J E Y would stand out even more. Like my entire thing was I want to stand out, but in a good way. <laughs> like that's what I was trying. To... Yeah. I had the same thing with Risa with with the two eyes. Nice, nice. See, I mean, you know, yeah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, thank you for uh, for taking the opportunity to to have this little interview. Uh, I, I've I've actually I've actually been wanting to do this for quite a while, ever since uh, nice. uh, you and I we first started uh, getting to talking together, and since I started working on Hammer, because um, I think it became very apparent when when I reviewed your comic that I could just tell that you were a guy who had so much passion and love for this craft, and I just wanted to talk with a guy who just had this. This fire inside, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, no, I, I feel you, man. I mean, I uh, I was talking to uh, another creator in uh, Saturday AM actually, which I'll talk more about later. For Absolutely, doesn't know who Saturday AM is, but uh, I was talking to her and uh, she was asking me how I was so fast. And I remember when me and my brother were really young, when we first saw Tsunami. We didn't know what Shonen Jump was, but eventually we learned what Shonen Jump. And we found out that they released a chapter every week, and we were like, "That's amazing!" <laughs> so we like trained ourselves to draw as fast as them, not knowing that they had assistants. And then when we finally found out that they did have assistants, we were already fast enough to produce an entire comic a week. <laughs> so I was like, "All right," well, cool. but like, I mean, you know, it's just that type of passion, that type of like, I guess, shonenness, <laughs> like that made me like just I don't know. Every time I think about a comic that like. Can make a climax can make your hands go up that just make you like scream that's what i want to do to everybody that reads my comic so hopefully yeah. i can hopefully i can do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you, you you're certainly like making a a track record that, that shows that this is indeed within your grasp like uh, oh, nice. you, <laughs> you, 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 you're doing good work but i i remember doing uh, the charity stream which you were so awesome to to join thank you for that by the way oh, well, thanks. um thanks for inviting me i was uh it was really fun to do it was great having you. I, I I know a lot of people like enjoy talking to you for the first time because you do have this very uh, lovely attitude. Um, <laughs> but but I remember you you told the story during the the stream about how you and your brother were like you didn't know that uh, people uh, that the manga cast had assistants, so you wanted to do everything on your own uh, within the same time frame. How the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so uh, on my website, um, on my Wix website, I actually have to update it. I'm, first and foremost, I'd just like to say, even though I have so much passion, it is unfortunately very apparent that 
I am unorganized. <laughs> like I just, I, I feel like I am like a, just a ball of energy that's not gonna like stop. But like I have no direction other than just drawing comics. Like I'm always gonna be drawing comics, but I'm also trying to do so many other things. That's why I like keep on coming back to YouTube and uh, keep on like trying to post more. But like then I don't post for like a week or two. Like it's just I don't know. That's what I feel like I am. But uh, all that to say is my website needs to be revamped. <laughs> but um, if you go to my website, all of Chicken Fight, which is the first series that I ever did, uh, completed anyway. Um, yeah, my first long series that I completed that was longer than like one or two chapters. Uh, I actually got that published with Antarctic Press as well, but I was drawing that traditionally as if I was in Shonen Jump. I would read every chapter of Shonen Jump, and I would say, I need to try to compete with them in my own comic. So, like, I would draw, like, thumbnails. I would draw, like, the entire, like, chapter, like, five pages at a time for thumbnails uh, through, uh, at nighttime. And then in the morning, I would wake up at, like, six or seven, and I would walk to the library, which was, like, a mile away. And then I would, uh, I had already had pages that I had previously done the day before the, for that, those five pages. So I would scan those five pages in, and then I would walk back home, and if I had, like, a color page, I would print out those pages, and I would, like, watercolor them. And then I would work on the next five pages from those thumbnails that I had thumbnailed the night before. And then after that point in time, it was, like, maybe six or seven in, at evening, so I would do five more pages, and then I would go to sleep and do the exact same thing over again. If I did that for a month. And I got done with 130 pages. It was the greatest month in the world. I was so happy. And then I had to get a job. And I was like, no. <laughs> and then it slowed me down tremendously. But, I mean, you know, yeah. So I did that with Chicken Fight. And, uh, like, that was, like, my first real attempt of, like, trying to, like, be a, a Shonen Jump uh, artist. <laughs> and throughout this entire time, I had no idea that, like, a Shonen Jump was, uh, a Shonen Jump alternative was being created. Saturday AM. Uh, I found out later on uh, that there are these, uh, uh, they had like this thing called pilot manga. And they were actually like teaching everybody, like, you know, how to, you know, do storytelling. And uh, they were like uh, reviewing their one shots and all this other stuff. I actually had a few friends that were in there. Um, I had no idea about this. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, years later, you know, here I am doing Hammer and you know, they get in touch with me, and I'm like, all right, yeah, this is awesome, let's do it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, that, uh, there you go, that's my show didn't say, oh! <laughs> So, uh, like, like th this is fascinating to me because you you always hear how, like, even with assistance, the professional manga cars have so little time to do anything else. Like, they work themselves to literally death, uh, and and then here you are, y y young aspiring Jay doing all this on your own how are you still alive like <laughs> <laughs> so um i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I honestly think i was born to do this man like i mean i really the first thing that i ever wanted to be i remember i was six years old uh there's this comic called um there's this tv show called doug uh oh, it was with nickelodeon yeah, like, do, 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 do. I, I love that show. But, like, he had this this uh, awesome TV show called Quell Man. Like, you know, he had this awesome comic called Quell Man. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, that's amazing. And I was six years old, so I was like, I want to be a superhero when I get older. So I had, like, a blue robe. And I called myself Birdman, and I would go fight my brother. And I was, <laughs> and I was, and I was like, it was really fun. But eventually I realized that I couldn't be a superhero because I would die. <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, well, you know, uh, Doug was actually a comic book artist. So, so let me be a comic book So, like, I started drawing, uh, and, like, I just never gave up. It was something that was just really, really fun. Uh, me and my brother were rivals. Uh, you know, he was, he still is, like, you know, one of the best, like, storytellers, like, I, I know. Like, now, he doesn't draw comics anymore, but, like, he, like, makes videos. Uh, he actually, he's really good. Like, he, <laughs> I I wish I had a link or something I could, like, share with you. Maybe after this, I'll send it, 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 like, send, send it to me, and I'll, I'll put it in the description. He actually worked on a video, uh, a couple movies, actually. That's what he's trying to do now. So, I mean, you know, he's, he's yeah, he's still doing his thing. Uh, he's just not drawing comics anymore. But I am not talented in that way. So <laughs> I, I'm super focused on like one thing, and I, if I give it up, then it's not enough. Other than I get sing and make jokes. <laughs> you, you put you put all your talent points in comics. So pretty much, yes, yeah. yes. 
<laughs> this was a, a video game. I was like, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> kept on going up. So. Yeah. Well, 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 well like, I, I think it's fine because, well, if you if we just had two views, then I kind of think like that would detract a little from it. I I, I like because when I see your art, I I haven't seen your your brother's art obviously, but when I see your art, I I get the like I was able to tell so much about you. I feel from what I read in Hammer and nice. uh, when when you did the uh, the speed paint of me as Akuma, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, he like I I, I got I so much. That's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I I have it uh, on my on my uh, on my uh, uh, laptop uh, at school uh, as the background. But um, <laughs> uh, but but I was able to tell so much about you because you put so much of yourself into the comic, and I kind of feel like uh, that if there had been anyone else involved in it, that kind of would detract a little from it. It wouldn't be as much one hundred percent you. It would kind of uh, murk the waters a little. Yeah, I you know, one hundred percent. I totally, I totally agree with you. I uh, so when I was drawing Hammer, I was you know obviously trying to look for a publisher as well, and you know trying to figure out how I could do this where I could find an editor that would be cool with not changing a lot, or if they changed something, it was like you know actually something that was for the better. I mean, don't get me wrong. I rewrote this series. I'll get into this later, but I rewrote the series a bunch of times. So, like, I had already done a lot of editing myself. But I, you know, obviously you need somebody to look over your stuff and say, "Hey, you should do this. You should do that." Blah blah blah. But there's so many horror stories in the comic industry that are like, "Hey, you go in with an epic tale about, uh, you know, a knight fighting a dragon, and you come out with a bunny." fighting a lizard no <laughs> like, you know and the reason why is because it's cute and marketable and yeah. <laughs> like you can like you know you can play that up now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that that is you know it's it was that extreme of a case with you know uh hammer in general honestly hammer actually wasn't getting picked up by anybody and i was like that's the reason why i put it on webtoons i was like you know what i have faith in this story i really like the story i think anybody that's gonna read the story especially if you like no so <laughs> you're gonna like this story so i mean that's the reason why i just said hey i gotta do this and that's another reason why i'm like super excited and very happy about saturday am because they you know you have you own your intellectual property like i mean you oh. know you they have 100 percent and i mean you know they don't get me wrong they have some publishing rights you know obviously because you know they're out your book. <laughs> like all that stuff. but i mean you know and on top of that like you know they do a lot more they market it like you know they're they're really cool i, I really like it but i'm trying it small right now but i mean you know it's just you know we're, we're beginning <laughs> but uh all that to say is like you know i i really enjoy the fact that you know this is this is my work and if i want a uh, direction or if i want uh help with something uh, you know, the advice is there. I could ask him, and he'd be like, hey, well, maybe we should do this, or maybe we should do that. And the reason why that would be awesome is because the CEO of this company actually uh, used to be, um, like, really high up in, uh, he was actually a CEO of Blockbuster at one point in time. Um, he actually was super high up inside the video game industry. Uh, he was a part of the original team that brought PlayStation to America. So, <laughs> like, he, like, yeah, like, he's, he's pretty high up. So, I mean, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's like, you know, Stories that are actually inside of Saturday AM, Clock Striker, and um, and then Wall Multi. This is such a long name. <laughs> the multiplayer, mass, the massively multiplayer uh, world of ghosts. That's what it's called. That's why I just called it and then Wall. Um, yeah. But anyway, long story short, uh, that's the reason why I like this company. I mean, you know, the advice is there if I want it, but like, you know, they also have faith in me. They, you know, he tells me he calls me up every now and then. He's like, hey, you know, wow, <laughs> like everything you're doing. Well, well, I think that uh, we, we, we're probably going to be returning a lot to Saturday AM because whenever uh, whenever I see your tweets, it's <laughs> it's like ninety nine percent is Saturday AM. Like it's always a hashtag or something. Uh, it's a link about that. So Jay, why don't you tell me and everyone else what is Saturday AM? <laughs> so Saturday AM is a uh, shonen jump alternative, or it's basically. What a shonen jump was way more diverse. We have creators from all around the world, uh, Nigeria, 
uh, to New Zealand, to Korea, to China, um, you know, Europe, <laughs> France. I'm from New Orleans. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, we have uh, people from like just everywhere. And the reason why we wanted to have creators from everywhere is because we realized that everywhere in the entire planet, usually anyway, I mean, most of the people on the planet anyway, like Mega <laughs> and Mega comes from Japan. And most of those artists are drawing for Japanese uh uh, audiences and that's not necessarily a bad thing I mean that's awesome that, you know it's you know revolutionized the comic book industry but at the same time <laughs> it also has kind of like you know they haven't brought enough diversity into it so I mean what we wanted to do was make sure that everybody can have their own voice and still read the same types of stories that you know they already enjoy uh, I personally you know I don't know I've always liked comics uh, you know American comics as well as also, uh, um, you know, manga. But I mean, I so, but I've never seen like a lot of diversity in manga, obviously. But I've always wanted to draw manga, so that's why I, you know, really like this entire company. I mean, the fact that I've I've always wanted to, be in Japan, but I can't go. <laughs> like I'd have to move to Japan. I'd have to learn Japanese. I mean, you know, and then on top of that, I'd have to prove myself for them to uh, take me seriously. I mean, you know, I would hope that they wouldn't want to take me seriously. I think I'm a good enough artist now. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, I'm just saying that it would be substantially harder uh, for me to do it as opposed to if I were to do it uh, living in Japan. I mean, you know, if I grew up there, it would have been great. Whereas now with the internet and, you know, everything else, you can essentially join Saturday AM, which is a Saturday uh, shortage of alternative. And, like, you know, essentially do the exact same thing. Now, granted, we're small. <laughs> we just started five years ago. Or they just started five years ago. I just joined them, like, at the beginning of this year. Um, but, I mean, you know, to give you an example of how dedicated we are to this craft, we're about to reach our 100th issue at the end of this year. Uh, you know, we we are a bi-weekly shonen uh, magazine. And uh, usually maybe about 100 pages each issue. It's like three to four um, titles that come out. We have 16 titles. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'll give you all these links later. But um, Saturday AM, www.saturday-am.com is uh, the website. But we have all of these different titles, just like Shonen Jump. Um, yeah, they're they're all really cool. <laughs> like I, I don't really know what else to say about. Like I just, I, I don't know. Like they, they give me a really good feeling. I've always I've always wanted something like this, and I know from personal experience, uh, just knowing a lot of artists, they've always wanted something like this. I actually was a part of a small project that me, my brother, and also my mentor um, started called Good Times, or it was called GX, and it was like a small anthology, shonen anthology that we wanted to start. Uh, it didn't work out, <laughs> but we started a, a, a blog that worked out for maybe, I want to say maybe like two or three months, and that was called Super Action Tales. And long story short, these were all small prototypes of basically what Shonen Jump is and, you know, what Saturday AM is. And, you know, I know a lot of other people have started it. Like, you know, we, this space has always been, but no one has actually existed in it until we came and said, hey, we're going to grab it. So I'm glad that I can be a part of this. Cause it's always been a dream of mine to be like a manga pivot. And what I mean by that is like Astro Boy. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> I actually don't want them. <laughs> like, I mean, every single one of them was literally a mega pivot <laughs> and, yeah. and, like, the way, like, the industry, it works. And I feel like if it works out the way I want it to, Hammer could be what I envision it to be, which is <laughs> the fact that it's coming out, if it comes out the way I want it to come out, it would be, like, absolutely incredible. And I think that it could work out. But... If everything works out the way I want it to work out, I would be the webcomic version of that manga, and I want to like exist in that space. And I'm not saying it'll it'll happen anytime soon. I'm not even saying it'll happen, but that is my dream. <laughs> There's a lot of other, well, obviously, but that's uh, that's that's one thing I want to do. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. That's Saturday AM. Um, you know, if you like Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, any type of manga like that, any shonen manga. Uh, even shoujo manga, we have this awesome title called uh, Saikami, which is a shoujo shonen hybrid. Uh, that's actually a part of the Kickstarter, which I'll talk about later as well. <laughs> but um, 
we have like all these great titles and if you like uh any of that then you know definitely um you know stop by you know check it out and another really cool thing uh not to sorry to go to that <laughs> was um we have a lot of cool contests throughout the entire year uh one of them is called march heart madness uh i'm not sure if you're familiar with uh the march madness basketball and stuff down here no okay well i'm not sure it's basically I'm, I'm white and short how the fuck would i know basketball <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, all right. Uh, basically, um, if uh, if I got this correct, it's uh, it's a gigantic basketball tournament, um, but it's in college. It's college basketball, and it uh, is throughout the entirety of March. I think it goes into April, maybe or whatever. But like, it's like sixty four teams, and it dwindles down all the way to four, and then it eventually dwindles down. So. That's what March Madness is uh, for basketball. March Art Madness for us is basically the same thing where we have um, uh, 64 artists uh, from around the world. Our last winner actually is from Australia. Uh, you know, he, uh, we have prizes. I think one of them was an iPad. Uh, we have, um, what else? Um, I don't know. There, there's, there's a lot of cool things <laughs> about this entire, I didn't like prep for this entire <laughs> Fine. like feel like it, but I mean, you know, I know that this uh, you know this competition is really cool. It's awesome for us to actually uh, find talent. We found a lot of talent actually because of this competition. Um, and some of the people from that competition move on to our second competition called Summer of Manga, which is basically when you draw a one shot, like fifteen pages or twenty pages, depending on uh, you know. With the specifications of you know what we give you, and we publish it in our magazine if we you know like it. Uh, I think we're trying to revamp our website um, and add a uh, section where we might. I'm not sure if this is actually going to happen, but where we might actually upload some of the other submissions that weren't actually published, so that way we can show love to like pretty much everybody that's you know like done stuff. But that's still kind of up in the air. I know there's uh, things that you know we're working on. And, gonna take it some time to you know figure out a lot of other stuff anyway yeah but yeah so there you go that's uh that's who we are really <laughs> that, 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 that's awesome uh so like let's say i was an aspiring uh comic creator mm -hmm. uh and i wanted to join saturday am are there any you know like uh is there any boxes i need to take like is there anything uh, requirements i think the word is <laughs> okay well Obviously, you got to know how to draw a comic, um, you know, or at least be able to tell the story. Uh, you know, if you're a writer and you write, then, you know, write. You know, you don't necessarily need an artist. Uh, you know, if you have an artist, definitely that's better. You know, I'm not saying that we'll match you up to an artist. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, there's, there's always that chance where we'll have, uh, you know, some options for you or whatever. But what we honestly require is just for you to have some type of internet presence. Um, if you have like Instagram or Twitter, uh, you know, you have uh, just work showing that not only do you know how to construct a page, uh, that you're serious about telling a story, um, you're constantly posting the story. Um, uh, I actually, like I said, you know, I'm sure you, at the beginning of us talking, I was on Webtoons, but there's a lot of people that are on Taptastic right now, Webtoons, uh, you know, Ash Jeeves, uh, you know, you know every single one of these, I tell you. So, I mean, you know, my point is, is that uh, if you have a presence on the internet and you're serious about what you want to do and you reach out to us and you're trying, you're actually in our face and, you know, you're standing out in a good way, then, I mean, chances are we're going to notice you and chances are we're going to, you know, reach back out to you and say, hey, let's, let's do this. But, I mean, you know, it's not as easy as one, two, three, obviously. Uh, you know, you we've... We built up, well, okay, so the CEO of the company built up a family that he's very proud of. So, I mean, you know, it's not like we're just going to let every random person in. And I assume that, you know, everybody that we would let in would have the same mentality in terms of, like, uh, hey, we are all about diversity. Uh, you know, we are all super dedicated to this craft. Uh, we also understand straight up that, you know, comic books is a really hard industry. I mean, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm making a bank over here <laughs> I'm having fun and I'm you know you know John comments 
as hard as I can. And you know, don't get me wrong, I get paid for you know what I do every now and then. But I mean, it's still just like you know, it's still a difficult time. So I mean, in Saturday AM uh, right now, uh, you know, you make money from getting subscriptions. You make money from uh, selling your book, uh, selling merchandise. I mean, you know, it's not like uh, you know, showing a junk yet where you're going to put in like 10 pages and get $10 per page yet <laughs> or, you know, $100 per page or, you know, whatever, you know, you know. So, I mean, my point is, is that it's a hard business and it's all about how dedicated you are into um, this craft and, yeah, I mean, you know, if you have that mindset, then I feel like, uh, you know, you definitely enjoy it. Saturday, you know. But other than that, just work as hard as you can and, you know, try to produce the best comic you possibly can, and, you know. Yeah. You know, see what happens. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, like the reason why I ask is because, like, right now you are probably addressing the biggest webcomic community uh, in the world. So, nice. like, <laughs> you, 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 it, it, I can imagine that there's gonna be a few people who would be, <laughs> hey, uh, who would be interested <laughs> in 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 joining Saturday AM because because I personally like yeah. from where I'm, from from where I'm standing or sitting. Uh, Saturday AM sounds like a great uh, idea and a concept that I strongly s- support because, uh, nice. s- s- spoiler alert, I'm a, I'm a huge weeb as well. I, I, I love manga and anime and st- stuff. But there is, uh, like you said, there, there are, like, there's not that much diversity within manga, uh, especially not Shonen Jump. And, and f- coming from a reviewer standpoint, when I look at manga... There's also these um, tropes and and these things where like oh okay there's the lolly character, there's the cheesecake scene, there's the guy with the spiky hair who finds out he has some kind of power and then there's this professional person who teaches him like it's just like it's everything is, yeah and yeah. and so like having a platform like uh, Shonen Jump but. Where it's not like we need to have this scene, we need to have this character, we need to have this like all these things that we are so used to by now. I think mm-hmm. that that's a, a great chance to really push people who love manga, but also understands how to separate themselves from the tropes. I agree, one hundred percent. I mean, you know, we uh, there are a lot of first chapters of our series on our website definitely check them out uh but one series that's coming to mind right now that i want to talk about is called boy better off ignorant and it's I, i'm not sure if you do you remember bakuman did you ever yeah. read bakuman yeah. okay there's this thing called serious humor do you remember serious humor at the very end when pcp came out it was like they were doing a lot of serious things but like they were like so ridiculous that but it was super serious that like you had to take it serious but it was so ridiculous that it was hilarious like <laughs> do you remember this like uh, long story short uh, okay well long story short what i'm trying to say is that boy better off making it like perfectly encapsulates <laughs> like this feeling everything that they do is absolutely ridiculous like what the premise not to you know spoil anything but basically the premise is they were these baby aliens called baby lions that come and they uh, make everybody dumb <laughs> and they like are trying to take over everybody and like one guy has to take down like these babies and you see these babies like inside of full grown man suits <laughs> like trying to like you know uh, take over toy stores <laughs> like it's it's ridiculous but it's so serious that it's hilarious <laughs> so, so Wait, what? Uh, so the the premise is super ridiculous, but they play it so straight that it just enforces the humor, or yes and no. I mean, you just uh, I don't know. I gotta. I, I oh man. I mean, there's only like three chapters. I think there's one chapter right now that's on uh, the website. Definitely check it out. It's like it's like sixty pages long, so it's a decent chunk of um you know uh, a good time, I guess, to read. No, <laughs> but I mean, you know it. It's really, it's a really cool story. But the reason why I bring that up is exactly like what you said. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, stories that, like, you know, use a lot of tropes. Um, and it just gets really cliche. And, you know, sometimes you don't see, like, different perspectives of a story. Like, for instance, uh, one of the last cons that I went to, uh, the last con I went to, the Chicago Wizard World Comic Con, I actually have a video of it on my YouTube. Um, there were a bunch of panels. Uh, some of these panels are actually filmed, and I actually still have to upload them. Um, so eventually that'll be uploaded. But uh, there was this one panel where we were talking about uh, the premise of Batman. The premise of Batman being uh, 
this person sees his parents die, it dies in front of them, and uh, they uh, decide to wear a bad costume and get vigilante justice. <laughs> By, you of know, course. And, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But it was funny because the CEO was like, okay, so uh, take that same concept and, like, you know, now put it with, you know, uh, black hair. You know, now the police are all over this person. I mean, like, like immediately, like he's gonna go outside, and you know, now he has to deal with that. So that's a, a completely different aspect of this story that you'd never think of. Now, you know, and all serious note, take the same concept and put it on a Saudi Arabian woman. You know, she has to deal with everything that you know a Saudi Arabian woman has to deal with on top of vigilante justice. You know, dressing up like Batman. Like, I mean, you know, that would be it doesn't have to be Batman. It could be anything else. Like. I don't know, squirrel man, or <laughs> like you know. My point is, is that it could be anything like that. But sometimes concepts like that, that are like so cliche, can have a certain spin on them that can you know make the story so much better. And I feel like by adding uh, more diversity to uh, every cliche or every trope you can add more voices and more stories to it. So that's basically what we are, you know, trying to do. Yeah. Uh, while, while you were talking, I, I just wanted to uh, to pick your brain a little bit about this whole tropes in, in manga and anime thing. Uh, did you ever read Tokyo Ghoul or watch Tokyo Ghoul? I have not, actually. Uh, I, uh, I've seen a few of the episodes. Well, not a few episodes, I'm sorry. A few chapters, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, b- 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 because uh, this is a huge famous manga and I'm probably gonna catch some flack for saying this but I fucking hate it uh, and the reason for that is because it uh, it starts out as its own thing it, it starts out as this like kind of horror thing where a guy becomes like a vampire and he has to fit in with the vampires but he's not a 100% vampire and it's like it's yeah. this really interesting plot and then the longer the comic goes on for, it starts to be like a shonen battle manga. Suddenly they have special powers. Suddenly they ha- they fall into, oh, you're a speed type. No, I'm a strength type. No, I'm a magic <laughs> type. Like, like all this shit. And I just feel that 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 ruins it because it had its own identity. It had its own personality. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's just like the exact, like there's a point where a guy has like, there's these vampire hunters and they have weapons and mm-hmm. these weapons have the same functions as uh, the, uh, the, the, the weapons in bleach where they like, you have a sword and then you do a thing and the sword is like Sabimaru. Evolves from, or yeah. Something. Evolves or something. Yeah. And it's like, do you have any experience with with, <laughs> with, with with something that could be incredibly creative if it's it's if it's strayed away from the tropes? So, uh, are you talking about like a story wise? Outside of AM, do I have something like that? Well, I- anything in general. I just want to pick a, a, a professional comic artist's brain about the, this issue that I have. <laughs> I okay. I I totally agree with you. Um. So, all right. Uh, I came up with a certain rules which. I, I'm so behind on making videos, but like I came up with certain rules as a comic artist that you know I try to follow, and one of them, uh, when it comes to making comic books, is you gotta stick to what you create, uh, and you know no matter what, like if you're inspired by something else, you know, you know have that inspiration transfer into your art, but don't let it like change your story because you thought that one thing was super cool. If you have already created your story, keep your story the same. You know, there's several things that I wish I would have, like, you know, now I've completely, I've completely drawn or, or written out the entirety of Hammer. Like, you know, every chapter is planned out. <laughs> like, every single thing is done. All I have to do now is just draw the thumbnails and then draw the pages. But there are a lot of, like, things that I really uh, admire about a certain story that I'm like, okay, well, I really want to add that. Or, or there's another story that I'm like, oh, wow, I really want to add that. But I can't because if I do, it's going to ruin all of Hammer. And that's going to make Hammer, like, a lot worse than, you know, what I envision. And if what I envision actually comes true, it will be better than everything else that I actually would like to steal from or, you know, take from from inspiration or whatever. So all of that to say is uh, I try to tell people, stick to what you want to do. Uh, a prime example of this is Siren. Do you remember this manga, Siren? 
Uh, is it the one where they get tra- uh, tra- in, they like, get transferred into the game or something? Yeah, like and, that in the game world. And and, and the, they have like psi, like psi abilities and yeah, yeah. yeah. You really, find out really it's like the future. Manga, <laughs> it was amazing. It was really good up until like uh, a certain point, and like I I fell off unfortunately. But like I remember checking back and like he, they changed like the main character's powers. To a point where he was essentially just doing gear second, and he had like smoke coming off of him. And I remember around this time, everybody in Shonen Jump was like having a character have smoke come off of them in some way, shape, or form because gear second looked super cool, and no one had ever seen you know smoke come off of them before. <laughs> I remember thinking, "Wow, like I can't believe that he would change his entirety, like the entirety of his like power concept." To, like do this now don't get me wrong i think he explained it in a certain way that made it kind of okay but wasn't his power like gravity or dimensional stuff or magnetism exactly <laughs> it, it got to a point where it was like a wall or something behind him yeah or something like that and like he could like change the shape and like it, no, 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 i don't think he changed the shape but like he got it like got bigger and like it like pulled people in like he could like now, couldn't make it, it shoot like, spikes kinda, and shit uh, yeah 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 it was like it was insane i i would it was it was super original, super awesome. Yeah. I really liked the, the super like the twists and turns that they had throughout the entire story. It was it was really good. And then they kept on like changing things. And like I'm not sure. I'm not. I I, I just want to go on record saying that I'm not sure if they did it because of what I just said. I mean, who's? I mean, you know, I'm not in Japan. No, <laughs> like I've never talked to a person. I have no idea whether or not. Uh, he did this because he was influenced by Gear Second. But I also remember that Twerko, uh, you know, did the same thing on, like, I don't know, I think it was, like, Chapter 80-something. Like, he was fighting, um, this bug dude, Tommy Rod, and, <laughs> like, you know, he, he was shivering, and, uh, because it was super cold, but because he was shivering, it, like, you know, made heat come off of him, and, like, you know, now smoke was coming off. Now, I get that that had nothing to do with him, like, selling, like, accelerating his powers or whatever. But like no, there was just smoke coming off of it. It was another small indication of people saying, "Hey, I really like One Piece." No, <laughs> just like how, just like how when Dragon Ball Z was, looking, everybody had fire all over. Them. I remember in Yu Yu Hakusho, everybody had fire on them. No, <laughs> I remember there's there's so many <laughs> like different cartoons. You you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So okay. my point in saying that is, had uh, the guy in Siren never changed this dude's power. I mean, you know, who's to say whether not that power was supposed to evolve that way anyway? But if he didn't do that, or if he didn't change his story, or divert in a way that uh, he thought was going to make the story a little bit more popular, then, I mean, maybe the story would have stayed, uh, you know, as popular as it was. I mean, you know, sometimes when you change it drastically, just because you think this one chapter is going to look really cool, or just because you think this one trope is going to actually stand out and make your story better, I mean, that's going to ruin it, because you built up or you crafted this entire story around, like, none of what you want to add into it. <laughs> and that's, like, I don't know, it's like kind of, it's kind of like making a cake, and then in the middle of making that cake, you also make a small slider hamburger, and for whatever reason, you decide to put this hamburger in the middle of that cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now you serve it to somebody, and they're going to be like, oh, this cake is really good. What the heck? Is that cheese? <laughs> like, I mean, is, you know, is, that, is this some kind of New Orleans specialty? Is that mustard? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my point. Like, <laughs> like I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. And yet, like, I mean, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, if, you, if you add something that's not supposed to be there, or if you change it in a certain way, then... It can really ruin your stuff. So I mean, you gotta just stick to it and like have faith in what you originally came up with, and you know, keep on going. And don't get me wrong, uh, you can you can have tropes in your story. I mean, you know, it's not the same. Like I mean, you know, tropes work sometimes. <laughs> like I mean, you know, they're, they're great. What's really good is what you should do with Hunter x Hunter and have um, uh, a deconstruction of the tropes. I mean, <laughs> like that would be even better. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. Well, 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 I'm 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 glad to 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 get some like some knowledge from from a guy who who actually sits with this and not the guy who just sits in front of a camera and complains a lot. Um, that, that's really cool. But you know uh, what you do, man. No? <laughs> thank you. You can. You you can. <laughs> um, but to, to get back uh, on track, because uh, you mentioned earlier that you had a book coming out. Now that wouldn't yes. uh, that that wouldn't happen to be connected to a certain Kickstarter, would it? 
Yes, it would. Yes, it would. <laughs> why, why don't you tell everyone about the Kickstarter then? Well, thank you, sir, for uh, bringing this up. <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, I just want to say that uh, Hammer, which is my book, uh, I've been working on this series for a really, really long time, and finally, 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 this book is coming out, <laughs> and it's going to be in full color. But it's only going to be in full color if this Kickstarter is funded. Now, this Kickstarter isn't just Hammer. It's also, a remastered version of Apple Black, created by White Manga, who is a huge YouTuber. I'm not sure if you know about him, but like he actually uh, does a bunch of tutorial videos. He talks about uh, creating stories, creating characters, coloring, um, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Like he's really awesome. I think he has like 192 plus thousand subscribers. Like he's awesome. Like so, his remastered book, Apple Black, which is already like an amazing, uh, huge indie book. Um, but also another book called Saigami, created by Andrea Portos. She also has a huge following. I think she has like 10,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. Um, you know, she is also doing tutorials and stuff. She is amazing. This Saigami is a shoujo hybrid that I talked about earlier. Uh, both of these are going to be coming out alongside of Hammer. And this is our way of uh, launching our new graphic novel line. There's going to be a slipcover. Um, there's going to be extra chapters inside of both of those books. There's going to be a few colored pages in the both of those books and better paper and, you know, uh, all of that. For my book, it's 350 pages. So it's, it's I think, <laughs> it's funny because, uh, like, the entirety of my book is 346 pages, but that leaves me with four pages of ad space. <laughs> so, like, it, it's a full book of just comic books. Like, it is, it is packed with nothing but comics. And, like, if you like Hammer, then this is, like, this is a thing for you. Like, you're, you're going to enjoy it. And, like, I can't wait until it comes out. But there's a bunch of different prizes. Um, if you donate uh, $25, that is the lowest tier that you have to donate in order to choose one of the three books that I mentioned. And if you donate $25, then you can uh, also get two digital magazines one of them is issue zero, which is going to have uh, the prologue chapter, of which I completely redrew. Well, it's the same story. It's just completely redrawn. And I promise you, I can't wait. I want to show you. When I drew this, I was like, why is this going to be this? <laughs> like I, was, I was thinking of you the entire time. And I can't wait because I want you to look at this. But uh, it's going to have uh, issue, uh, in issue zero, it's going to have chapter zero. Hammer. It's also going to have a bunch of awesome cool content from a lot of other cool stories in Saturday AM. And there's another digital issue called the Primer, which is going to have uh, essentially like a data book of all of our main characters in our main series and stuff. And uh, what else? Um, you get three digital wallpapers. Uh, you can get... Um, oh, man. I, I know I'm forgetting stuff. There's so many prizes. And it keeps on going higher and higher. And I think one of the highest tiers is $750. If you pay that much, uh, you not only get everything previously up to that point, if I'm not mistaken, but you also get a chance to become a voice actor out of our uh, next uh, animation short from Mutton Chop. Uh, there is a two minute and a half, something like that, a small little short on our website. Uh, it's from Mutton Chop, which is a hilarious series. Basically, what if One Punch Man meets Animal Farm? It's really awesome. <laughs> Check it out. It's really cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, you know, we're about to do another animation tour. And if you donate $750, I think there's like three more spots for that. Or maybe there's a little more. I don't know. You, you got to check it out. I haven't checked it out. Uh, I'm sorry not to make myself go insane from checking this <laughs> thing in like every I, second. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put a link here. <laughs> so people thank you. Thank, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, definitely check it out. Um, you know, you can, uh, there's, there's so many cool tiers, so many cool prizes. I think if you donate 60 or 75 bucks, I want to say it's $60, you get all three books. Um, so, I mean, you know, that's definitely probably the best deal if you want to get everything. But the reason why this is such a good, awesome thing, not only if, if we get this funded, It'll it'll be a huge statement in the mega industry. The fact that we can not only we'll be competing with like uh, other companies like uh, the Viz and you know, um, the Impress, you know, other actual publishers that are in stores because we'll be in stores. Like I think the first book that'll be coming out will be mine. It'll be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it'll be in stores, and I think February this gets funded. And 
on top of that, uh, you know, the fact that we're bringing more diversity to, you know, main industry, uh, you know, the fact that we're, you know, doing this uh, after only being alive for five years. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're, issue, we're doing so many amazing things. And, you know, like, it's just, I don't know, like, it's it's such a good deal. Usually for $10,000 in a Kickstarter, you're doing that for one point. And we're doing that for three. So, <laughs> like, like I said, like, this is... Probably one of the best Kickstarters you're gonna see in a long time, and you know if you like any of my stuff, this is this is the time to pre-order a book just for twenty five dollars. I mean, there's actually uh, we revamped my uh, Hammer website, and the first three chapters are now for free, and you can just read them, get like a small little glimpse. It's it's all in color, uh, you know, it's it's pretty cool. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> So uh, everyone should totally go and, and check out the Kickstarter, share it around, throw some money away. Because I, I did, like you said, this is more than just a, a comic book. This is also, I hate to say a statement, but it's a... a, a the mega a, revolution, man. Yeah, it, it's a sign that, <laughs> that, that, that times can be changed for the better. Uh, not, not, not necessarily a, a middle finger to, ah, fuck how it has been before, but it's a way of <laughs> progressing it from where it is now. I agree. I 100%. I mean, you know, there's there's other companies that have tried doing what we've done, and, you know, a lot of them uh, are chasing things like, you know, just an anime or just a video game or, you know, just this or just that. But we have been super diligent on one thing, which is telling great stories and having great properties. And, you know, all of those things are coming to us right now. We just, we're talking to animation companies. Uh, we're talking to video game companies. I mean, you know, it's it's all in due time. So... Probably in the next couple of years, uh, Saturday AM will be a pretty huge day. But I think if you uh, like it's even a little bit right now, jump on train because uh, it's it's going fast. And, and wouldn't it be cool to just say you were there helping with the beginning? I don't think, man, I want to be a pillar. I yeah, want to be a pillar. <laughs> but, 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 but also the backers of your books. Like, imagine you were there to kickstart this entire thing. Like that. That's that's gotta be an awesome feeling. It's, yeah, oh, man, I can't, I can't wait. I, <laughs> so, uh, I, I really like One Piece, obviously, and sometimes oh, I, really? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do this thing where, like, I, uh, um, kind of, like, compare my life to, or, like, what if, what if I was Luffy? <laughs> if I was Luffy, who would this person be, who would this person be, and so on and so forth. So I feel like this manga revolution is, like, uh, like, and not to say that I'm in the worst generation, but no, <laughs> but I feel like uh, White Manga would be like Chipotle Law, and like you know we just teamed up, and now we're like trying to take down you know the Yonkos of the world, oh, no, <laughs> but like like creating like this awesome like alliance, and like you know we have like all these other cool uh, teammates like um, Anthony Jackson, uh, Bratley Johnny. I mean you know we have uh, who else? <laughs> Michelle Masaroto, uh I can't. There's so many cool people on our team. I can't even think of them right now. Andre DeFotos, uh, oh man, Morgan Walker. I mean, you know, we, we have a lot of people on our team, and I'm, I'm super excited that we can uh, we can do what we're doing right now. And I can't wait until our face is going to pop off. Ah. <laughs> like, I'm super excited. Obviously, I I I, I, I I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. Oh like, uh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're hiding it so well. <laughs> it's shown in energy. Just you know. <laughs> after this, I'm gonna just draw for the rest of the day. <laughs> I gotta finish up actually a few, a few videos, but uh, we'll we'll see how that works out. How, so. how how come I'm just imagining you like slumped over doing the drawing and you just have like this uh, Dragon Ball esque power energy? You have smoke coming <laughs> off of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's coming off of uh, my wake up. <laughs> yeah, you're in the second gear. My wife walks in, she's like, What's going on? <laughs> Did I just walk into an animal? <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, uh, I, I asked around uh, for some questions, and I, I do have uh, a few, uh, most okay. of all from uh, from Rajaru, who, who actually wanted to know. Uh, what are uh, what are some of your prime influences in terms of art and storytelling? So uh, art, uh, there are a few. Um, obviously, one of these uh, to an extent. I actually had to change my entire style because it looked too much like One Piece. If you look at Chicken Fight, it looks like all I had to do is tweak it a little bit more, and it would look exactly like One Piece. And the fact that that is 
uh, was bothering me. Um, you know, when people would look at this and say, oh, wow, this just looks like One Piece. This is cool. I mean, you know, this is awesome. But, like, the fact that people could say that means that they could just pick up One Piece. Like, I'm not giving them anything new other yeah. than, like, a different story. So I really wanted to change my style. So obviously One Piece is still there, but I also added Bruce Tim. Uh, who was the lead character design artist of the DC Universe back in the day with uh, Justice League Unlimited and uh, the Batman series, Batman and uh, Superman series. You know what I'm talking about? Another yeah. uh, I'm, okay. I, I'm not super into Western comics, and I know extremely little about them, but I know of them. <laughs> well, no, I loved uh, the Saturday morning cartoons and all of that. Like, it was, it was amazing. But, I mean, that was... Uh, he was a huge... Uh, influence for me um who else trad Moore. he's actually an awesome student that went to scad which was the school that i uh went to for a year actually and he was like this superstar uh artist and i remember looking at his stuff and just like you know for hours like how does he do this so, like this is incredible so like i tried to incorporate his stuff with like bruce tim and then i also uh, i i have been being taught by this one guy named Rashad Doucette ever since I was like 10 years old. He taught me and my brother uh, and we would learn from him storytelling and, you know, art and all this stuff. And as a really young, impressionable boy, <laughs> like every time I would draw around him, I would like kind of um, uh, like take his style like subconsciously. So I feel like as I got older, I was incorporating all these other styles, and I feel like I also incorporated his style as well. So Rashad Doucette, Trad Moore, and Bruce Tim, I feel like are the biggest like art influences for me, uh, as well as I saw Aichida Oda. Uh, but yeah, so those three for art and for storytelling, I Aichida Oda, <laughs> Akira Toriyama, <laughs> uh, who else? Um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've read a Scott Pilgrim probably. Um, you know, I've, I've read a bunch of, a bunch of different stories, uh, because Rashad actually, he was like, look, if you just read manga, you're just gonna be a copy of this, and you know, that's not what everybody that creates the best manga did. Like, case in point, Aisha Oda, when he was really young, uh. St- like sat in front of the TV and just drew frame by frame the Little Mermaid and like all these other Disney movies, not because it was anime, <laughs> like it was be, it was a cartoon, completely different than you know what you know was around at the time in Japan probably. So I mean you know my point is is that you have to branch out to you know other things so that way you can like you know, learn from other people and you know that's what I've been trying to do. So like I branched out and. Now I read a lot of other uh, superhero comics. I read a lot of other indie comics. Uh, a lot of cool webtoons. Um, I, I read a lot of... Now, recently, I've actually been super busy, so I haven't been able to read as much as I've wanted to. But, you know, yeah. So, But I like I like a lot of uh, different stories. But probably my main story influences would be Kurt Toriyama and Ajit Oda. Those are, those are... I hear they did well. <laughs> uh yeah yeah you know um uh, there's also the question uh that again you, you you're talking to a, a wide audience of people who wanna uh improve their craft and be better uh, mm-hmm. so do you have any advice i can't talk around advice <laughs> to uh, to people with either storytelling or or art in, in any way so for storytelling, I would say uh, for and also for art, it's practice. It's it's all about practice. Uh, you know, for storytelling, you if you're an artist and you are trying to tell a story, I would suggest drawing a lot of short stories, not short epic stories that turn into like I don't know three thousand page you know tales about you know a bunny finding a lizard, but no, <laughs> but also like you know like I don't know like you just you gotta like tell a short story, something that's like ten pages, you know, beginning, middle, and end. Uh, you know, if you can tell a story that's interesting enough that can get somebody's attention immediately and keep their attention and make them want more, in, even after you ended the story in fifteen pages or less, then I mean, you are a good storyteller. <laughs> that is something that you need to practice 
And the only way you can do that is if you tell other stories, short stories, something that doesn't actually just have fighting in it. Or, uh, you know, can you tell a story that's interesting about two people just drinking at a bar? That was actually something that a Marvel editor told us. <laughs> I remember when I was in the scan, uh, he was. So, yeah, I remember um, when when you're in SCAD, like, there's this thing called Editor's Day, and they bring in all these editors from all these big companies, and they can talk to you and say, hey, you need to work on this, you need to work on that, and if you do this, then you might have a shot working with us. <laughs> so all of that to say is one of the things that they said was uh, we're not looking for people that can draw fight scenes. We're looking for people that can make a boring scene interesting. We're looking for people that can, like, have two people at a bar sitting, drinking a beer, and you're just, like, 100% in brawl because it looks so amazing. Like, that's what we're looking for. So, I mean, I – the only way to practice that is to learn how to do it. Like, you have to learn how to draw boring scenes and make them interesting, <laughs> as well as also being able to make an interesting scene that's maybe a fight scene or something else. Uh, it's completely coherent. And completely understandable. <laughs> like there's several times where I can draw fights. I've seen fight scenes that, like, uh, you know, break the 180 rule, which I'm sure you've covered at some point. I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, the 180 rule gets broken a lot of times, um, and it can like make a fight scene really uh, difficult to like understand. I mean, you know, these are things that you can practice and only practice by drawing comics. So if you want to learn how to draw comics better, practice. Drawing comics, short stories, <laughs> something that is not complicated but short. Um, so yeah. So so, so th this is I'm I'm happy you say this because this kind of um, it kind of adds to what I've always been saying, which is just fucking do it. Which uh, a lot of people are like, no, I need to wait until I I have like the perfect idea, or I'm not good enough with uh, with art, so I can't d do my comic, <laughs> and And that's not a whole lot different than uh, helicopter parents, where it's like you need to learn how to fail. You need to go out there, do the thing, yeah, fall 100%. flat on fall flat on your face, and have it completely blow up in your face, and then go, okay, gotta improve on this. And <laughs> and, and so what you're saying, like do these short stories, not necessarily the big story because like the big epic that you want to do yeah, yeah don't do yeah. that yet yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that Work yet on it. Talk, <laughs> talk about a guy going to the shop getting a carton of milk and getting hit by a car on the way there like <laughs> do whatever do like just do something you can do something even better than that uh you know i i really liked that <laughs> explanation that you just brought that's really cool but um this is actually a game that i came up with try to uh stretch my muscles which i never actually played because i never had time but if you have index cards have like maybe five or ten index cards for each category or four categories who what when and where so like you know it could be a man a woman a cat a dog uh you know a robot or whatever and then what are they doing <laughs> they're walking down the street They're flying in an airplane. They're doing whatever, and you take all these index cards and you mash them up, and then uh, you make a small story from that. And there you go. Like you know, that's something to push your muscles. I've never drawn a robot before. How would I draw a robot? This doesn't look like a traditional robot. Oh, that's because my style is different. <laughs> like I mean, you know, you gotta learn how to fail. Obviously, you gotta have people look at your stuff and say, "Hey, that sucks." So you can have a thicker skin. So that way, when you get into the actual industry and you actually have a book that comes out that you're super proud of, and somebody looks at this and says, "Hey, this is a seven out of ten," <laughs> like you can be like, "Okay, well, there you go. I gotta keep on going so I can, you know, get better." <laughs> like you just, you gotta get better because if you, you gotta have a thicker skin, because if you don't, then I mean, you're not gonna make it. In the I mean, you know, art is an expression of yourself, and I mean, if somebody's criticizing it then I get it. I mean, you know, it's like you're criticizing you. But, I mean, that's why you need to understand that it's not necessarily, especially if you find somebody that's criticizing you because they're a dick, but, you know, then blow them off because they're a dick. I don't know, but if they're criticizing you in a good way, hey, do this because it'll make you better. Then listen to them because they're trying to actually make you better. <laughs> like, I mean, exactly like what Ryza just said. Uh, you know, you guys need to just fail because if you fail hard enough, 
and con consistently enough, <laughs> then I mean, you know, you'll realize, hey, uh, I won't have to do that because I've I've done that and it's you know brought me into failure. So let me like do this instead. Like it's kind of like driving. If you're driving and you see uh, I don't know a cliff over there, but you're not gonna you know drive over that cliff. <laughs> you're gonna like you know say okay, well that's a bad you know idea. You can keep on turning the wheel until you get to a, like a success and you know you gotta learn how to like you know maneuver that might be a bad analogy <laughs> but you get what I'm saying yeah you get what I'm saying. They, they to fail and and I, I I I'm happy that you say that because uh, the way currently at Discord we, we have all these people who want to make the thing and they're mm -hmm. like oh, I want to do this I want to do that just fucking do it like just yes. get get out there do do something so uh the very first uh, book that I ever self-published. I was in 11th grade, uh, and I did it. I drew 170 pages in like two or three months, or something like that. No, it was it was like a month and a half, something like that. And I remember every day I would work or come to school. My teacher in talented art was like, "What did you do all day?" And I was like, "Yeah, I went home and I drew many pages." This is when I was learning how to draw with Manga Studio. And like he was just baffled. <laughs> he was like, "Do you have friends, Jonathan?" I was like, "Yes." So <laughs> like a dude. He was like, "What do you do?" I was like, "I like drawing, man." So I mean, you know, but it was a stupid story. It was called um, Black Cloud or something like that, and it was about this guy that had to fight a river because he fell in love with this girl who was homeless, and like he wanted to save her uh, and all of these other homeless people that lived next to this evil river. That would turn into a monster <laughs> but because it was a river you couldn't attack it because it was water <laughs> so he had to freeze it and then attack it <laughs> like it was ridiculous yeah it was ridiculous but uh it was a story that like i you know just wanted to put out i you know i did it i finished it it was, it was done it's it, i put it out no one bought it <laughs> no one said anything about this and no one needed to i'm glad no one did i was Mortified of somebody had this book. Well, my point is, is that you know that's something that I just had to finish up. Uh, another thing, immediately after that, I did another book, uh, Phobia. Uh, that <laughs> the first time I did this book, I wanted it to be in black and white and also in color, but I didn't realize that you needed it to all be in color if you were going to do that because you know that's how printers work. So <laughs> I had a, a seventeen or eight, a seventeen or twenty-five page book. That was like twenty five pages or twenty five dollars <laughs> because it was printed out in color, and only one person bought this book. And that dude is named Colin Daniels. If you're watching this man, thank you. <laughs> you were in a down frame, and I appreciate it. <laughs> but that's a lot of love going out there. Yeah, man. <laughs> like I mean, I was there was only one person that bought that. But I mean, my point is. It's, it's, it was so ridiculous. Like, I mean, that was literally a dollar a page. Like, maybe even more than that. <laughs> like, it was insane. Like, like I, like it, it, it's amazing to me that uh, I, I even did that. But my point is that I had enough drive and I had enough of a, an idea to do it. And like, you know, I just did it. I wanted to see it come out. And it was a short story. It wasn't anything that was for long. I mean, you know, granted, it was the first chapter of something that I wanted to be super long. But, I mean, you know, that's what practicing is. That's what, you know, going through the motion is. Like, I, for instance, Hammer. I've made a lot of videos about this, so you guys can check it out. But, I mean, and I'm sure, you know, you doing your research for, you know, the video that you made for me have also figured this out. But I drew Hammer over, like, four or five times because, like, I wasn't satisfied. And, you know, like, that sucked because I hated drawing the same scenes over and over again. <laughs> but, I mean, my point is that I had to do it because... I personally thought that it would fail knowing of uh, all of my previous experience and drawing those other comments, like, you know, uh, hearing all those other comments from everybody else saying, hey, I didn't like this, or this didn't make sense, or, you know, this is like this, or this is like that. So because of all of those experiences, it made me um, just think about what I was doing more and more to the point where I redrew this story so many times to get to where I'm currently at today. And... If you're saying that you have an idea, but you're not doing it because you're not as good as you want to be or because, you know, the time isn't right or you're not making money, you're never going to do it <laughs> because yeah. you're never going to have time to actually do this. Like, I mean, I'm not sure exactly how old you are if you're saying this, 
But if you're under 18, this is the time to do it. You have no responsibility. You're <laughs> like you're living with your parents. I mean, take advantage of this time. I remember when I turned 18, it was like a brick hit my face because of responsibility. I was like, ah, <laughs> like, it was my like, comics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I had to latch on, and like, you know, don't get me wrong, it was a heavy weight, and now I'm poor, but it's working out. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I signed a couple contracts for a couple books, and, you know, my book is coming out on top of all of that other stuff. So, I mean, you know, it's just a matter of time before I can turn this thing. But you gotta realize that you know it takes a long time. I mean, you know, it's not just I'm gonna draw this one thing. Everybody's gonna be like, "This is amazing! I'm gonna get a million likes because you know that means something." Because it doesn't. No. <laughs> and then you know everything is gonna be great. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that a million likes isn't a good thing. I'm just saying that you know until you get to an actual million, I mean, you know that's is not actually gonna mean anything either. <laughs> like, I'm going on a tangent right now with social media, which is something else I'll talk about if you want me to. But my point is, is that, you know, you got to just do it because if you don't, then you're never going to do it. And, you know, you just, you got to get past that mental block. If this is really what you want to do, you'll find a way to do it. My hand itches if I don't draw for four days. No, <laughs> like my hand itches. Like I've been doing this for that long. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... I, th- th- there's two things more that I want to cover. Uh, one of them you actually touched upon yourself uh, just now. Uh, I just didn't want to cut in. Uh, but that was uh, that uh, doing my research for Hammer, uh, I, I I saw all these pages that you had done of Hammer before where you were like trying different styles, you were testing the waters. Uh, uh, one thing that stood out to me was that you, uh, at the beginning where Stud k- uh, knocks out the animal, uh, you had like, sh- how heavy should the blow be, and how should I show it? Because would it be too violent and stuff? And this isn't as much of a question as it's just really that was so interesting to see because here was a guy who actually put thought and care into like what will the both the style and the stuff that I show convey, and how will that fit in with the tone? Because. Um, <laughs> Not to beat a dead horse uh, even more, but like if we look at Les Lindas and how they did it, it was like it's a total clusterfuck where it's like oh, it's so it, it it's so flashy colors and it's cute and we have pie and face jokes, and here's rape, like it's it's yeah, it was uh, not a good comment. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. So uh, I I definitely think. Uh, do you still have those pages anywhere so people can check them I out? Because I think I that do. was I'm... incredibly uh, like informative. Thanks. I I want to say they're actually on my blog spot. I want to. Um, I'm probably gonna re-upload those particular artist rants to my webtoons so that way people can just look at them whenever they want. Uh, I took them down on accident. Actually, it was. I was. I, I felt so bad <laughs> when I did. I couldn't get back to, like, everybody that had tried to see the webtoon page. I couldn't reach out to them. I was, it was it was a bad day. <laughs> but I, um, I, I, actually, I actually think that happened just as I was uh, reviewing your comic because I remember seeing them and be like, yeah, oh, yeah. D- d- this is so interesting. I want to include that. And I made a <laughs> note about it. Then when I got back to get the pa- yeah. pictures, I was like, <laughs> well, the fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely, uh, I want to say they're on my blog and then I'm like, put them on my blog and regardless i'm going to try to put them on my web team but um yeah i when i was doing those pages uh or trying to go through the motions of trying to figure out exactly what style i wanted i knew that i wanted this series to be more cartoony because after i did chicken fight i realized that there were people that didn't like anime and manga as much as i like anime and manga, uh that live that are in the comic book game, that i wanted to not only have a career in as an American, but also, you know, somebody that also likes to make Like, I know that I can't go to Japan. I've always wanted that option to be open, which is why I have a manga style. But I also know that as an American, making money as an artist is a lot more difficult to do that drawing manga than it is drawing a cartoon. <laughs> so I said, hey, I have to change my style. So not only does it look like my stuff, 
because if I draw a manga, it still has to look like my stuff, like, or else it's just going to be like, I might as well just buy that one manga book because that looks exactly like this. Like, why would I spend money I'm, I'm on that? Really, I'm just really quick going to uh, cut in, because uh, you, yeah, you, yeah, uh, you, you touched on this whole thing, like drawing manga style. Uh, that is a thing that you recently have proven without a shadow of doubt that you can do. Uh, everyone who is within the, the sound of my voice, go to Jay Odin's Twitter and see him drawing <laughs> stud in, in all these different comic styles. That is the fucking best... I'm actually going to, while we're on right now, I'm going oh. to actually upload the next three while we're doing that. <laughs> so that way, because I have, like, there's 87 different stops, of which, at the very end, there's going to be a cool little surprise that uh, you guys probably think is ridiculous. Like, you're going to look at me like, you, what? <laughs> like, what? Why? What? Like, you're not going to know what to say. But, um, uh, hold on. Which yeah. one was it? Uh, what about this later? No, <laughs> just check back on Instagram in a few. You guys can see it. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, this entire month, there's going to be different stuff. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, it, I knew that like, I needed to draw a cartoony something so that way not only does it look like my stuff, but also that I could get a job like maybe at Disney or maybe uh, doing something else somewhere else uh, at Marvel or you know, at Oni Press where I'm currently you know doing that book. Um, I knew that drawing manga would make that a lot more difficult. Because, uh, unfortunately, all throughout SCAD, I was told that, you know, you need to drop manga because no one likes that here. And it was a lie because, obviously, you know, it has influenced a lot of other people doing a lot of other things nowadays. But, I mean, you know, they were right in the fact that it's not as accepted as a cartoon. And I also realized that when I draw in a really cartoony style, it allows me to like um, kind of exaggerate a lot more things. And it gives me a lot more freedom to actually make it look a certain way. <laughs> so, I mean, all of that to say is I really have wanted this particular look for Hammer. And I knew that like I had to get that look in order for it to be as successful as I wanted it to be. So that's the reason why I redrew all of those chapters constantly. Uh, and even when it comes down to violence, uh, you know, I wanted to take out a lot of the blood. And I also didn't want it to look, I wanted it to look humorous, but I also wanted it to look impactful. Like, hey, wow, that looked like it hurt, which is why his eyes come out. <laughs> but like, you know, it's like, you know, it's kind of like funny because it's like a squeaky toy. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, don't get me wrong. All of that to say, I mean, you know, there is violence inside of the manga. I mean, you know, there is, it's, it is a shonen manga. Like, I mean, you know, it's, it's exactly like how you would think, like, when One Piece and White Beard, half of his face was, like, you know, blown off. I'm not sure if you ever saw that part. And I'm uh, sorry, I, I spoiled it. I, 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 but, I got up to in One Piece where they were doing the thing and then they, fi- uh, and then they get attacked by a bunch of assassins and then one of the assassins happens to be a princess and then they abandon the thing they were going to do and then go to, to bring the princess to some place. It's, it's near the beginning, but I was like, Hello, where the, where the I fuck know, are was- you going, story? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just I. Oh man, that's that's when I got good, man. <laughs> oh, I need to get back in. Well, though. I mean, dude, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this for everybody that has not read One Piece. Uh, if you do read One Piece, everything from chapter one to seventy is okay and not necessarily as interesting as me. Seventy is when it gets to a point where you're like, wow, this is pretty cool. That's not me and Arlong and all that. After that, it's not really awesome or amazing until the end of Alabasta. And that is when I, for the first time, put my hands up. I was like, yeah! <laughs> and then, after that, is when it gets even better at the end of Scorpio when uh, he uh, knocks that bell. And then, after that, with Robin. And then it's just, uh, I can go on and on. It just gets better and better and better. But that beginning is really hard to get through. I'm sorry, Ashton, if you ever get a chance to watch this. Uh, well, uh, very, very I, 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 I do, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people, you can't really spoil much for me because I will just forget it. I mean, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, for me, I when I first got into One Piece, I mean, I liked the kids' four version. I didn't like the kids' four version, but I liked One Piece enough to watch the kids' four version. <laughs> so when I was watching it as a kid, I thought it was interesting, and then uh, I got ordered, my brother went to college, he came back, and he showed me Luffy going to gear second, and I was like, that's K.O. Kid. <laughs> and then 
after that, I watched a bunch of cool little scenes, and then I skipped ahead and watched, uh, read the latest chapter, which was like chapter 400 something, and I had never read anything else up to that, and I was hooked after that. So I was like, I need to immediately reread this, and I read from chapter 100 to 400 in like a month and a half, <laughs> and then like been a fan of yourself. So that is, uh, yeah, that's how fanboyish I am. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, but all that to say is, yeah, Hammer does have, uh, you know, it has a lot of moments in it where it's surprising, uh, you know, I think it's, it's not gonna be, like, shocking to the point where, you know, half of somebody's face is gonna get blown off, but, I mean, that's something that happened in one, so that's the reason why I reference that, but, uh, you know, it is something that, will be like, whoa, I didn't expect that. That's cool. <laughs> like it's I have always wanted Hammer to be an all age comic, but honestly, it's thirteen and old. Like, I mean, you know, it's it's yeah. It has a couple of violence uh, you know, scenes. Not to the point, like I said, where it's gory or anything, but there is violence. Well well I, I also think that if when Stott had smacked that animal uh with his I guess hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> if there had been blood and pulp and stuff flying out, you'd be like, "Wow, that's an asshole." But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but 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 you know, him just knocking it out. It's like, eh, okay, it's it's it, yeah, it happens. Exactly. I, I I didn't want. I also didn't want to make it. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Like, I I, I didn't want to make it uh, too saney. I can mm. say, like, yeah. as shown in comics, usually don't have that much blood, and if they do, then it's like you know a couple scratches on the face, uh, you know, maybe a couple dots here or there, and you know that's what I've always wanted. Like, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of shown in manga that do have a lot of blood. Like, I, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, you know. I'm not <laughs> like I, I can punch right now, but I mean, you know, the shown in manga that I'm talking about is like Dragon Ball Z. I've always wanted, I want Hammer to be something like Dragon Ball Z. Like, where it's super light, kids can love it, kids can like it, but us young adults can also really like it and appreciate the violence that's in it, but, like, know that it's not too, uh, um, too heavy for somebody that's, like, you know, not used to it. Like, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I've wanted for him. I will say, for the second arc, how, how it ends, it is, uh, Probably the heaviest, the second heavy, the heaviest moment up until the very end of this. I will say that in terms of violence, but it's not bad. No, <laughs> like, it's not too bad. Like that's what I'm saying. Too. Okay. Uh, that, 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 that's good to hear. Like it, it's also a good incentive for people to find out what that is. So like good, good, uh, good businessmanship there. Um, yeah. The last question is is a thing that every time I'm doing an interview, I I just gotta ask it for my own uh, personal curiosity, and that is, uh, how did you find the webcomic relief, and, and what do you think of it? <laughs> so uh, I really like the webcomic relief. You rock, man. I <laughs> I really like the fact that not only you help out uh, webcomic artists around the world, uh, you know, I, you give them actual advice you you know give them hilarious critiques <laughs> i mean you know you, you're very interesting i really liked that uh that one season uh uh that she did all of those um uh the seven deadly sins i thought that was a, a pretty interesting season i actually because of that i actually doing something on my own channel um with my glasses and stuff. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I was inspired by you, man. Thanks. I it. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I really like your channel. Uh, you know, you're really cool. Um, I, I will agree with a few people, your videos are very long, but I, <laughs> I am in no way, shape, or form, uh, you know, bothered by that because I usually watch your videos while I'm drawing. I just put on something and, you know, just like, you know, just like kind of have like something on in the background while I'm drawing. This is actually, I think, what uh, Emily Ree, I think, <laughs> said as well. Like, you just have a screen 
uh, where you're drawing and a screen where you're just watching the TV and you're what I watch a lot. So, well, well, well I that, really, uh, just just a real quick touch on that. That's also why I started adding the type of music that I'm using because normally I I would probably put in something else, but this mm-hmm. is all you know. I I went online and and found out like what does what do people typically listen to when they're just drawing or doing homework? And that's typically this light trip hop thing that I got going in the nice. background. So that's why I picked that. Yeah. I loved the music that you had for Hammer. Uh, I, it, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm not sure if you did this on purpose, but like, it sounded like a New Orleans theme because I had like know, a, was, the saxophones and stuff. Like that, it, was, that, that was it was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was nice. It was, it was really cool. But, um, but yeah, how I found you. I um so I live right now in Florida and uh, when me and my wife moved here, we uh like she works um a ways away. So she would go off like this is before I had quit my job for me to move here. We moved because she got a promotion. And I draw comic books so I can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like I also like to point out, let me just back up and yeah. say this before I continue. If you're a comic book artist or if you are doing anything artistically and you have a second job, uh, you know, that's okay. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, just, I like to point out that most people that don't do anything artistically also have a second job. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the doing them that you love and you also have a, another job means that, you know, you're just dedicated to what you're doing. So, I mean, I am a cashier. Uh, I actually had been at all three of the places that I've been a cashier. I have uh, moved up very quickly. I, uh, you know, have been employee of the month. <laughs> I have done like a lot of like when I was uh, at the first job, I became a manager at one point actually, and I hated everything that I was doing. I didn't want to. Do it before. I was there. I was only I only I was only a manager for three months, and like you know the amount of stress and hatred that I had for everything that I was doing, I was like I can't do this. <laughs> like I, there was a lot of other things I know. I, this is a really long story. I don't want to get into it right now. But long story short, I was a manager before. I've you know, dealt with that before. And then uh, the second job that I was at, I went up to a certain point. I was in accounting. And I said, you know what? This isn't what I want to do. <laughs> like, I keep on, like, moving up in these companies as I'm going to, like, you know, have this be a career. And that's something that is awesome. Like, you should definitely have that as a backup if you're doing something like that. Have that option open. Always do your best in every job that you're in. But... At the same time, follow your dream. <laughs> like my be a comic So luckily, my wife is amazing, and she uh, let me, um, you know, basically drop down to a point where I was doing part time twenty, which is uh, I had at least twenty hours in the week, and uh, I would be at home most of the day, and I would just like draw all the time. So anyway, that's how I actually finished up volume one, living in our in the state before here. But uh, I had to quit that job, and that's when we moved to Florida. And when we moved to Florida, uh, you know, we were waiting for everything to be hooked up, like internet and stuff. And uh, when the internet finally did hook up, I was looking up cool ways to promote uh, my webcomic uh, on webtoons because I was about to launch it and do all this stuff. And I didn't really know what to do. So I found uh, a video from you, and you were critiquing... uh, Oh man, I I forgot this dude's name, but he was I uh, it was Andrew Dubson. That's what it was. and uh, and you went in on him, uh, and like you're like I hate the fact that I think if I'm not mistaken, like he um uh did a really good animation, but like you know he was saying that like he hated the fact that like he was doing anime and manga. Even though that's all he did in the very beginning, and they changed his stuff, saying that like he was a cartoonist and like all this stuff. And long story short, I really just liked the fact that you were thorough and it was interesting. And while I was watching you, I was drawing, and it was like you know super like easy, and like <laughs> like it made me like it was it it made me feel more at like home because we had just gotten to this place. Like we were, I was like still trying to get used to everything. Like it was really cool. so I. uh this was this was right before I actually had internet. I actually saw that video um, when I was in the uh, office uh, of my complex, and I went back to the office complex, and I would like stay there because they had internet. I would stay there for like I don't know, like thirty minutes to an hour, and download random videos. And I would download a few of your videos, and I would just come home and just like listen to videos <laughs> and draw. And then the next day, I would delete those videos so I could have space on my computer. 
for art. And then oh, <laughs> I'll go download some more. And then I eventually we got internet, and I was like, all right, cool, come do this. And that's when I uh, watched uh, everything. But it was all out of order at first. And then I was like, oh man, this these are like seasons. <laughs> like I was like, so like I went back and watched all of Sonic You, which was like like heavy. <laughs> But then, then I saw Las Lindas, and I was like, that drinking game is actually, like, lethal. Like, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> like, that is, like, that's, like, that's, you're going to die. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a reason it's called a suicidal drinking game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm a lightweight, but, like, I mean, you know, if I did that for even 30 minutes of <laughs> one of those videos, I would, I would be wasted. <laughs> so, I mean, I... I uh, I watch that. I mean, you know, I watch all these videos. They're really funny and stuff. So, yeah. So uh, I I knew at a certain point. I've always had this thing where like I, I feel like if I get to a certain point, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna meet him one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna talk to that person. One day. And I knew that like you were like within grasp. I was like, I can talk to this person. I can do this. Like Hammer is a good enough comic. Like I mean, I can do this. So like I uh, reached out and you know things worked out. And I was like, this is this is cool. So. You know, I'm glad that a year and two months later, <laughs> we're finally talking. Are, you know, you, are, are you counting? <laughs> I have a good memory, man. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. Thank you, man. Uh, how did you like the Hammer review, by the way? I loved it. It was, uh, it was awesome. I, um, what was going on? I, I was drawing, I'd woken up and like, uh, like four o'clock in the morning, and I was drawing and I was getting tired, and I was like, "Man, I'm about to go to sleep." And I got a text, and it was the hem review, and I was immediately awake. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, it's time, it's time to watch this." So like, I watched it, uh, and I thought it was hilarious in the very beginning. Like, Talk about them. <laughs> like, this dude loves drawing. <laughs> like it was insane. Like I, I thought that was really funny. I showed my wife. She thought it was really funny. Uh, you know, she it was it was just really it was really cool. It was, it was awesome. I tried to show everybody. Um, every time I try to tell people, I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, I do big things. I, I have awesome, uh, you know, experiences in my life. Somebody from Denmark actually reviewed my comic. So what can you say, huh? <laughs> by the way, by the way, your total was fourteen forty four. So <laughs> give me your money now. <laughs> like I mean, it was. Stuff like that. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, like that's just what it is. But I mean, yeah, I was I was super excited when I saw. It. I've actually I downloaded it and I uh, it's in my hammer folder. So like every time I need like some inspiration, I'll just watch it for like volume one. What I want to do, hopefully, I can get to a point where I'm, um, you know, a little bit better. But uh, uh, two things. One, I like to say for the prologue, just now that I have this entire audience that has seen, uh, you know, that video, <laughs> I would just like to say. That that prologue was meant to be <laughs> like a small promotion, <clears throat> where I would put out a panel a day on my Facebook and my Twitter, and also my Instagram, and it was just to tell the entire story throughout the entire month. It wasn't supposed to be like a coherent, like um, panel frame by frame, like you know, story. I know how to tell stories, obviously, because immediately after that, from chapter one and on. <laughs> It was a lot better. I remember there was somebody on webtoons that I like, gave me this long review, basically saying, "I hate this uh, prologue. This is ridiculous. Like, you know, you suck." And then uh, they continued to read the rest of the story, and I they they said in that first uh, message, uh, "You suck, and I'm never gonna read this again." And you can reply if you want, but it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna read this anymore. And then uh, I replied back, and I was like, "Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. If you continue on, I'm sure you'll feel differently." But yet again, if you don't read this and I guess it doesn't matter <laughs> and then they replied back and said I'm so sorry I actually read the rest of this and it actually is really good and I'm sorry that I actually did that I hope you didn't you know think that I was just trying to be a dick and I was like well what do you mean you weren't just trying to be a dick? you said no <laughs> you weren't going to come back and read this like obviously that's what you were trying to do so I don't know my point is is that I know what I'm doing it's just uh for that particular thing that was, was kind of a rushed promotion because I had I have a lot of like weird uh, deadlines in my head. I'll say I have to do this at this point in time just so that I can like you know, force myself to do it, which is a good thing and a bad thing. At some, but at this particular point in time, it was a bad thing because I rushed the prologue, and uh, the story that happens is exactly what needed to happen in the story. That's exactly what happens. 
and it's a prologue into the series. <clears throat> and I wish I would have actually given it a lot more time the way I did this new chapter that's going to be an issue zero of Kickstarter. Uh, wink, wink, you know, support me, but uh, <laughs> everybody's watching. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's uh, the first thing, uh, the prologue, and, um, oh man, uh, <laughs> the point is, is that I, I just, I don't know, I don't know, man. Uh, okay, so, so, so I'm, I, I'm 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 gonna finish off with with uh, uh, with the final question. Uh, will we see a decrease in bubbles? I am working on it. Okay. I really, I really, I really need to delete those bubbles because I know that they are a problem. I already, I agreed with you. Uh, 100%. <laughs> like, that, I, I, I know that that's the only reason why I'm teasing you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I have not gotten a chance to actually, so I need to do it before we actually send to the printers, but yeah, uh, I, they, they will be gone. No, <laughs> okay. uh, or less, anyway. Yeah. Be less. I, they need to be there for other weird, stupid reasons in my head, but I mean, they will be way less than what they are now. And, and, and that's like, that, that's all that me, nobody online could ask for. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Jay, thank you so much for this interview. It's it's been a treasure just to like sit here and talk Thanks, with you, uh, get get an insight in, in your world. Uh, once again, to everyone who's watching this, uh, by all means, please go check out Hammer. Uh, but more importantly, uh, go uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, <laughs> go into the description, and <laughs> there will be a link for the Kickstarter. Please share it around, throw some money uh, Jay's way. Let's just change the landscape of of, of comics here in the West. Uh, he's doing a little boogie, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I follow you on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I think you have an Instagram as well. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, Facebook, all at J O D J E Y O D I N. And there will, of course, be links for that in the description as well. So that's all for me. Do you have anything you want to finish off on? Um, thanks again to everybody that's watched this. Appreciate it. Please support our Kickstarter. Uh, please pre order a book of Hammer. 350 full color pages. It is possibly one of the best deals you're ever going to get. <laughs> so definitely do it. It sounds you guys like it. Support- it's it's gonna be awesome. Hopefully, if everything works out, it'll be actually fifteen dollars in top of stores when it comes out. So I mean, it's even even more of a better deal. Like <laughs> like it's it's a really good deal. So definitely check it out uh, and definitely support me if you guys want uh, you know to bring diversity to my So yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, well, uh, th- thank you, Jay. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You rock. You too.